Hey ladies, I wanted to apologize for my absence. Um, I had some circumstances arise that made the project very difficult for me. And because of it, I've decided that um, I'm only going to do the project once every two weeks from now on, but she'll still see it. Um, this week we are doing a little book club type thing, our own analysis and opinions on the book Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, which is a very well-written book um, of the horror and sci-fi genre. So, without further ado, please welcome me and Chappie. Thank you for watching. Hey Libbies, it's me, Sabriella. And I'm Chappie. And this week we were reading Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. We're going to chat a little bit about what we read. So what did you think of the book? Honestly, a, it was a huge misconception what the book was really going to be about. I read it when I was younger, but I haven't really remembered it very much. So rereading again, it, it's incredible to see how artistic it was versus any interpretation I've ever seen of it. The science behind it as well is still evident, but unlike the mad scientist lab kind of thing, it, it was very moving as far as a human experience type book. Very, very well written. Yeah, it was, um, if you only have seen the movie renditions, it doesn't give the book justice. The book is way better than any <laughs> of the movies. Um, she, she's got a very, um, artistic way of writing, and she really gets into the character's, um, motivations to do things, and, um, the monster himself makes you question human character um, because he's so, at heart he's very pure, but the things that people do to him drive him to evil, and so um, it makes you wonder whether all criminals were driven to what they do. Um, You're absolutely right, and the thing about the creature as well is how the author has written what the creature says and how it interacts with the his creator, basically. And it kind of gives you an insight to how a human life is really played out. A lot of us take our lives for granted and don't really analyze what kind of life we possess. With the monster, he was not born into the world and just lived it. He was created into the world, into a world that he never really had the time to understand. So all the experiences that he went through, that he had gone through with the villagers and with other other interactions with other people, it kind of gives you an insight to how strange the world really is, and how somebody, whether it be a monster created out of human parts, or even someone just in a foreign country, in a foreign world, to them, it, it's an incredible experience, and it's something that really gives you an insight about that. And that's why the character of the Doctor himself is interesting, because his interaction with the monster, and his responses to how the monster talks about the world, really gives his, his own mental insights, mental breakthrough, and really opens his eyes, as it did for myself. The place of women in the book really gives a, it gives a good picture of how women were treated in that day, and it also kind of questions, um, makes you question why they treated women like they needed, they were objects for the male satisfaction, because you see that with both Elizabeth and with um, with the monster asking for a female, they assume that the women are just there to please the men. And more importantly, from the men's perspective, is that the, especially with the monster asking for a wife, it feels like to him it is completion to his life. It is, and although the monster has had very little experience, he already understands just from what he's seen that he needs a woman, that he needs a wife. Not not just a love, not just a romance, a wife. That's the key term that I noticed when he talked to the doctor about that. And the monster really brings out that primal instinct, that primal part of man that we overlook constantly. Um, for many of you who also know of the movies or know of the story of Frankenstein, the science and the historical part of the book is what I also analyzed. And 
the science and the science behind it and why people consider it as a science fiction novel is not so much the laboratory or the electricity. It's not the technical stuff. It's the fact that the monster was created from inanimate life, that he was created from different parts of a human. And despite being created, he still had that part of the human that scientists even today can't fully understand. And the science fiction part of it is that the time period it was written, and Adam, once you're dead, you were considered dead. That your soul was gone, that you were for the ground now, basically, and you were, in that time, for religious people, you were with God. But for Frankenstein and creating this monster, he created a massive leap in science that would have either intrigued people, depending on who read it, or terrified people. Terrified people in thinking that a monster that could exist. I almost compare it in, in perspective of a chemist making a zombie. The, the virus of a zombie that being created in our type of world and of undead coming back to life. I mean, that is mind-boggling for us, and a lot of people are afraid of it now. In the time period this was written, it's the same thing. That a scientist took inanimate life, took human parts, and brought it back? That, that's mind-boggling and terrifying to think about, that a person could walk down the street and be a past dead person. It could be something that could have been a, a horrifying experiment. And with today's research in stem cells and cloning, um, we're coming even closer to that being a possibility, and that makes this book all the more fascinating. Um, you kind of see that with, like, Star Trek and, and <laughs> things like that, that, um, that other theories, they, the science fiction genre really, um, it predicts what's coming down the road. Become science fact, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people attribute the, the cell phone builders attribute to Star Trek for just having a little communicator. Well, for stem cell research and for people trying to extend life and even reanimate it, this is where a big this is a big part of that community looks into this type of stuff. The real science behind it. Unfortunately, for those who are excited about that, not much is given about it. Unfortunately, a few bits and pieces of the journal of Victor Frankenstein about his process. But not a lot of the actual technical stuff is given. The stuff you see in the background of an old black and white Frankenstein movie. You don't really hear too much about it as much as you would like. Doesn't he say in the book that he's not going to reveal his secret because he doesn't want it to happen again? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I mean, he obviously yeah. talks a little bit about the process of what the creature needed to exist. Mm -hmm. He did mention that. But he didn't talk about, oh, what kind of tubes did you use? What kind of machines did you he didn't want to talk about that because he didn't want that secret to go out. He realized that this is more of a curse on himself, what he did. That's the weird part about it, is that Victor Frankenstein didn't consider this an accomplishment as much as he did a curse on not only society for creating something so primeval, but a curse on himself. He now has the sole responsibility for a creature that should never have existed in the first place. And that sets in his mind so much in this book, and it whirls around, the more he talks to creatures, the more it whirls around that he created this, that he made something that's thinking this way, that has been interacted this way, that acts this way. He, he originally tried to escape it. Um, you know, he didn't, once he realized what he had done, he didn't want the responsibility anymore. Um, and he tried to blame the creature for his hatred. But in truth, Frankenstein um, realized that it was his own fault and that he should hate himself more than anything. And that, that whole chain of thought is what led to his end. Um, and it's a shame that even... Throughout the, throughout the life of the monster, um, they hated each other, but in the end, the monster shows compassion for his creator. Um, whereas Frankenstein never did show compassion for his creation. And that shows you something else about human character. Absolutely. He's not willing to admit that he created this thing. and never really showed the compassion because he just... He saw it as a curse. He saw it as what people had seen the monster as, a monster. Whereas the monster himself never saw himself like that initially until it was revealed to him. 
that's the scary part about how society can mold a person from being a, 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 an act of God, basically, an act of science, a beautiful work, into something dangerous and monstrous and something that should be feared and hated. And all the way to the point where Victor Frankenstein himself could not live with this. And that's what was the saddest part about the book, was seeing that Victor could never admit to it. That he never could say, yes, I'm proud that I created this thing. That I'm proud that I have advanced science. That's, that's never a part of him. That's never been a part of him. That's why it's interesting for everybody, I imagine, to see with the movies how he's prideful. Yes, I created the monster. I know he's a monster. I know he's a problem, but yeah, he's going to work on it. And yet never admits to it. In Young Frankenstein oh. and in the other Frankenstein movies, they go, ah, he lives! <laughs> exactly. And <laughs> He never does that in the book. He ever, never does that. Ever, ever. He's like, oh God, what have I done? Exactly. And it, that's the sad part about the movie interpretations. Or any other interpretation you've seen. Although Young Frankenstein's meant to make fun of the... <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> I love that one, but don't get me wrong. Um, those are fun movies, and don't get me wrong, people. Watch them for the cinematic beauty of them. A lot of the old, especially the old black and white one, and Young Frankenstein, the black and white remake. The comedy Mary, remake. The the movie Mary Shelley's Frankenstein is pretty good, too. And it does a fairly accurate version of the book. However, it's a lot more graphic. Um, and they do take out a lot of the important details. It doesn't give you as much of a daunting insight to the world of Frankenstein and the monster. It just kind of gives you what is going on basically, of mm -hmm. what the basis of what's going on with Frankenstein, with the monster, with society. It kind of gives you that basis of it. But the book itself goes into a poetic nature of everything. Everything that's gone down. And the way it's written, too, is more than just a story by just Frankenstein. It's a journal entry. It's a conversation. And it's funny because you read the section that's the monster talking, and you forget that there's quotation marks around that conversation. Because Victor's writing it. It, it. You lose yourself in the monster and how he's communicating. It, it's mind-boggling how the movie's never fully captured that poeticism that Shelley wrote. It, it, it's phenomenal. Well, thank you all for watching. I highly recommend that you go read it if you haven't already. Thank you very much. See you guys.